motto of anesthesiology is actually vigilance and that just speaks to us always paying attention and, and, and being aware and looking for, for small things. For every patient who's under anesthesia, we monitor their heart rate, their blood pressure, their oxygen, the exhaled carbon dioxide, which is an indicator of their breathing and the temperature. Our job is to put the patient to sleep and to monitor all of their vital signs to correct any small abnormalities before they become problems that could cause the patient harm, to facilitate the surgery, and to provide IV fluids or blood transfusions or medicines to support the patient in any way that they need. We also give medications that the patients need to prevent things like infections. We give antibiotics during surgery. If a surgeon is working on big blood vessels around the heart, the blood pressure can change. So we try to just keep all of their vital signs in a normal range, but it's also knowing what might be causing them to be outside of the normal range and fixing that so that you're not just making the blood pressure or the heart rate be a certain number, but you're doing the right thing for the patient so that the patient's blood pressure and heart rate come back to the, the usual range. Sometimes all we need to do is tell the surgeon, hey, you're affecting the patient in this way and they can fix it, especially in small patients. Those changes can be more dramatic because everything is so close together. The surgeon doesn't have very much room to work before he might be affecting something else. We are constantly looking at the monitor and looking at the, the surgical field to see, see what's going on and then we wake them up at the end. Here, why don't we do this whole underneath. Perfect. Picture in there. Okay. Pediatric patients come in a, a variety of sizes from less than a pound to over 300 or 350 pounds. And then also they come across the whole developmental spectrum. So we have patients who have different developmental stages and different needs, different diseases and different surgical problems from adult patients. All we do is we take care of children, some having simple procedures, and then we have frequent opportunities to take care of children having complex procedures. So what might be very, very unusual at another hospital is less unusual here. And even if it's a, not a common procedure, we have a lot of experience that we can bring to bear on that patient from similar situations. Sedation and anesthesia sort of exist on a, on a spectrum from being wide awake to being totally very deeply anesthetized or very deeply asleep. And when we do deep brain stimulation, because there will be a painful part of the operation, we give a, a combination of medicines um, that will make them deeply asleep. At a certain time in the procedure, they need to be more awake to cooperate and answer questions or follow commands. We continue giving enough medicine so that the patient can be relaxed and calm and comfortable, but uh, decrease it to a level that they will come out of their deep anesthesia state and become more in a, we would call it, conscious sedation state. Tap your fingers. Yes. Yeah. Tap them, tap them. Okay. okay. I'm going to go back to sleep, okay? I'm going to go tell your mommy how good you're doing, all right? Good job, baby girl. Okay. It's an honor to have parents trust us with their children. I think we all try to treat every child as the most important child in the world at that point in time. So I think that's the standard, is how you would want someone to treat your own child. We're probably actually nicer to other people's children than we all are, are our own. <laughs> I'm coming.